alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds are electrophilic at both the carbonyl carbon and the beta carbon. When a nucleophile reacts at the carbonyl carbon, it's called direct addition, or sometimes 1-2 addition, because it just involves the first two atoms of the conjugated system. When a nucleophile reacts at the beta carbon, it's clear that the entire conjugated system is involved. When you break the CC pi bond, the electrons go all the way up onto the oxygen, making an enolate. This is called conjugate, or sometimes 1,4 addition, because the reaction involves all four atoms of the conjugated system. In both cases, there are negatively charged intermediates. The tetrahedral intermediate from the direct addition does what a familiar tetrahedral intermediate might, either kick out a leaving group if one is present, or protonate at O-. The intermediate of conjugate addition, an enolate, is itself a conjugated system of three p orbitals. Since it's negatively charged, we know it's likely to act as a donor of electrons, so we're interested in its homo which has one node. This delocalized orbital illustrates that the enolate can react at either the O- or the alpha carbon, just like its two resonance structures imply. While both can happen, for reasons we'll learn about later, enolates typically react at carbon. These two possible reaction pathways fit the pattern of kinetic versus thermodynamic control. Direct addition is usually the fastest pathway because the carbonyl carbon has a relatively large partial positive charge and nucleophiles are initially attracted to that site. But if the nucleophile is also a decent leaving group, that step is fairly reversible. Meanwhile, the conjugate addition pathway has a higher activation energy barrier because the beta carbon has a somewhat smaller partial positive charge, but the product enolate is more stable than the tetrahedral intermediate because the enolate is conjugated. There are many factors that influence whether direct or conjugate addition predominates in a given circumstance. It depends, it depends on the specific structures of the substrate, the nucleophile, and the reaction conditions. In some circumstances, we can control the outcome simply by controlling the temperature and the duration of the reaction. This is often the case when the nucleophile is cyanide or an amine. In other circumstances, we almost always get mixtures of products, no matter how we modify the reaction conditions. This typically occurs for moderately strong nucleophiles that are poor leaving groups, like Grignard reagents and sodium borohydride. We typically avoid using these nucleophiles on alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds because nobody wants to have to do column chromatography unless they really need to. Luckily, many nucleophiles have strong preferences for direct or conjugate addition, depending on a property called their hardness or softness. We'll explore this topic in the next video.